Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Spencer's Retail Q3 FY24 Post Results Earning Conference Call hosted by Bhartiwala and Karani Securities India Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Akhil Parikh from Bartley Walla and Karani Securities, India Private Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of BNK Securities, I welcome you all to uh, the Spencer Retail's Midden Quarterly Conference Call of third quarter of 524. Uh, from the management team, we have with us Mr. Anuj Singh, CEO and MD, Mr. Sakit Sa, Group Head, IR and ESG Reporting, uh, Mr. Pankaj Kedia, uh, Vice President, Investor Relations, Mr. Harshil Gathani, Chief Manager, and Mr. Sandeep Bangpa. Without taking much time, I'll hand over the call uh, to Mr. Anuj Singh for his opening remarks, and post which will open the floor for q and uh, Over to you, Mr. Anuj. Thank you so much and good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Anuj and I'm the MD and CEO of Spencer's. Uh, very happy to talk to you today, uh, post our quarter three earnings. Uh, I'll start by giving a, a brief personal introduction. So I joined the company in uh, end March uh, 23. So it's been uh, close to 10 months uh, that I've been at the helm of the company. Um, uh, and uh, I come in with experience both in the FMCG domain as well as in retail. Uh, I've had a long career with uh, in FMCG, both in India and internationally. I worked with uh, Unilever and Nestle. And in retail, I was uh, at Walmart India in their uh, uh, B2B business uh, as their chief merchandising officer for three years uh, prior to joining Spencer's. Uh, so uh, I'll start by giving a brief context of the business, and I won't take you back to two years, three years. I'll, I'll keep the context limited to uh, when I started uh, 10 months ago. Uh, so obviously, at that point of time, uh, you know the uh, the organization had gone through, was going through, and is still uh, in the midst of uh, a pretty challenging uh, situation, both external and internal. Uh, but uh, as the new management, new leadership, uh, you know, we kind of uh, uh, took uh, a stock of uh, where we were in, uh, uh, let's say, April 23. Uh, what we quickly realized is that look, we do have a right to win. Uh, in, in, in the space which we are. And that's uh, stemming from the fact that, uh, you know, we have a, a strong legacy and a very high brand recall, uh, owing to the fact that we are probably, not probably, we are the first and the pioneering modern trade retail uh, format in India, uh, going back to over two decades. Uh, we also uh, have a right to win because we have a, a, a unique and differentiated, um, you know, positioning and offering, uh, both on Spencer's as well as on the Nature's Basket side. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we were uh, quite strong in certain focus geographies while we did not have a pan-India footprint. Uh, so, clearly the task was to build on uh, some of our inherent, um, I would say, strengths or right to win. Uh, and really, uh, uh, you know, turn around the organization both from a, a top line and a bottom line part, part of it. Uh, some of you, we, would have, uh, we, we had interacted in September, uh, you know, when we were talking about what actions we had taken in quarter one and quarter two. And we had clearly called out that, look, for us, H1, which is quarter one and quarter two, was in large senses recalibrating the business. Uh, as we said, uh, um, you know, uh, this recalibrating of the business was looking at it very dispassionately from uh, areas where, which were uh, not adding value and were being dilutive to both either the top line or the, or the bottom line, uh, as well as looking at uh, areas which were not making, uh, you know, strategic sense. Uh, as a result of that, in uh, Q2, uh, we took some um, uh, big strategic calls. Uh, we uh, exited uh, two uh, states, uh, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Uh, you know, we uh, were of the opinion that they were not uh, of a certain scale and they were not, uh, you know, in the strategic clusters which we wanted to focus on. Uh, this meant that we actually uh, shut down 20 stores. Uh, and you, if you look at it from a top line, it did have a top line impact of about 100 crores. Uh, but it was these stores were also uh, loss making, uh, so you would have, uh, you know, we, we were we would avoid on an annualized basis close to 18 crores of uh, EBITDA loss. So it was a tough decision, uh, but it was the right decision uh, which we took. Uh, we also then uh, looked at uh, looking at uh, right sizing the organization, looking at a operating structure which was 
to the scale that the business was, uh, and we, uh, uh, you know, right-sized the organization uh, at the, at, in phase one, which was both uh, at the corporate office level as well as the store level. Uh, so I think these were some actions which we took, which obviously, if you look at the H1 results, does have an impact on the top line and the bottom line as far as H1 was concerned. Uh, so therefore, clearly for us, Q3 was a quarter where some of the actions which we had taken uh, uh, should have started uh, playing out uh, and resulting. And, 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 and therefore, if you look at the Q3 results, the earnings which, which were shared yesterday, uh, on a Q3 uh, basis, I mean, uh, quarter three, we reported uh, a 2.5% growth uh, on a year-on-year -year basis and a 14% growth on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Now, while this might, not, that, this, this might seem modest, 2.4%, uh, I think it has to be looked in the context of what the quarterly performance was in the last three quarters. Uh, it's still too early to call it a, a turnaround, but it is clearly, a, I would say, a phase where uh, we are uh, shifting momentum uh, and we are, uh, you know, turning around from uh, experiencing degrowth to uh, getting even modest growth of 2.4%. If you look at, um, you know, obviously this is both on Spencer's and Nature's Basket. Uh, Nature's Basket uh, has delivered uh, a stronger growth, higher growth, 10% growth on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, margins are uh, strong on uh, Nature's Basket, 29.6%, which is an improvement, uh, and, and therefore Nature's Basket has uh, has also contributed to this overall 2.4% uh, growth, which is there. On Spencer's, on, a, on the Spencer standalone basis, uh, like I said, uh, the growth uh, on year-over-year -year basis was 1.2%, but uh, if you uh, net it out for the store's closure, the the like for like growth is almost 6%. Uh, so with the same set of stores, uh, you know, excluding the stores closed, uh, you know, uh, there is there is good growth which is coming through. Obviously, this is a festive quarter, so we are not uh, uh, discounting the momentum which you get or the tailwind which you get because of festive. Uh, in that context, I think the performance was strong. Uh, as I also mentioned, we... It was not just uh, the initiatives are not just focused on top line, but it's also looking at our costs. Uh, and we did, um, you know, effect uh, measures to control costs both at the store and the corporate office. Uh, you know, this resulted, uh, if you can, I mean, some of you can pick up the numbers. Uh, you know, the, the benefits will start flowing, continue to start flowing in uh, quarter four and quarter one. But in quarter three itself, uh, there was uh, close to a 9% reduction in operating expenses. Uh, and this is what has lifted the EBITDA for the quarter. Uh, the EBITDA for the quarter has, um, is a 250 basis point improvement on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, and I think that, that should give confidence uh, to all of us that uh, we will be able to drive both the top line as well as the bottom line. Uh, so, so really, I mean, that's the crisp short commentary on what uh, quarter three was. Uh, I think going forward, um, you know, this, uh, like I said, this uh, reaffirms uh, uh, the belief and the confidence in the plan to drive top line and to control costs uh, to really accelerate our path to profitability. Uh, the key priorities for the organization will therefore continue to remain how to grow the top line. And our top line drivers will be, um, uh, will be really focused on uh, the three geographies where we operate uh, in a clustered manner. And these geographies are uh, east, uh, primarily West Bengal. Uh, Eastern UP, which is uh, we have a uh, uh, good concentration of stores in Banaras, Lak uh, Lucknow, uh, Gorakhpur, uh, uh, NCR. Uh, so that is uh, the second cluster. And the third cluster is Hyderabad and Coastal Andhra. Uh, so Telangana and Coastal Andhra. So, the, so again, the plan would be to grow our top line focused on, on these stores. Uh, while we did, uh, you know, close down, take the, uh, the call on closing down stores, it does not mean that this is going to be a one-way street and we're only going to be looking at rationalizing stores. We will expand and we will open new stores, but we will do it in these key clusters. Uh, you know, we, we, in, in quarter four, uh, we will have about 25 case, uh, square feet of tra uh, trading area which will come online. Uh, and we expect for next year as well, uh, we will have between Nature's Basket and um, Spencer's, we'll have uh, one lakh square feet of uh, trading area. So we will open new stores. Uh, we are also spending, uh, we are also taking uh, conscious calls, judiciously picking stores where we will refurbish some of the stores which are, uh, you know, which is we have stores which have been with us for 12 to 15 years. So we will refurbish stores as well in these areas to elevate the overall experience. So growing top line through focused expansion and focused um, execution in these clusters is one component. Uh, the second part of uh, our top line expansion plan centers around our omnichannel business. 
you know, we have a, uh, we, we launched in September, we launched what we call the express delivery business model in, in Calcutta. Uh, and and, and uh, we have a pretty unique e-commerce model because uh, we do our fulfillment uh, from the stores which we have for a variety of reasons. It, it, it uh, avoids us having to incur additional costs in, in terms of putting, you know, dark centers, fulfillment centers, etc. And it helps us to sweat our existing assets as far as the stores are concerned. Uh, it used to be a slotted delivery kind of a system where you uh, pick your slots. Uh, but in Calcutta, we in September, we launched an express delivery where the proposition was, uh, you know, a wide assortment, 50,000 plus products uh, delivered uh, uh, within one hour. Uh, so it was not the 15 minute delivery, but it was still within one hour. And we believe that that's a, a relevant proposition in grocery. Um, uh, for a, where you can give variety, but you can still deliver within one hour. Uh, and with our uh, uh, footprint of stores in Calcutta, we were we are able to service 99% of the pin codes uh, from our existing network, which is there. Uh, this has met with good response. Uh, you know, uh, we have uh, uh, seen a good uh, increase in the express orders uh, and with good uh, you know ticket size. Uh, so this is again uh, you know given us confidence that this is a model which we will continue to expand. Uh, you know our um, a share of uh, omni-channel today is uh, 12%. Uh, and again, the plan is to uh, keep pushing this up towards uh, uh, a number which will be 20% in the 12 to 18 month period. Um, so, so really, I mean, you know, the, the second center point for growing top line is around uh, driving this business. Uh, it's not just going to be in Calcutta. Uh, based on the model of Calcutta, we will look at, uh, we're looking at uh, a couple of other cities. Uh, again, the key criteria for us is uh, where we can, uh, where we have the ability to deliver this proposition of uh, covering the entire city from our existing uh, footprint of stores. Uh, so there are, uh, like I mentioned, we have, uh, you know, cities like uh, Banaras and Lucknow where we have a good concentration, and we will be expanding this express delivery component in those two cities as well. Uh, the third part of um, our uh, top line expansion would be, obviously, you know, continuously looking at our portfolio and our, and our mix. Uh, of categories, we we are a multi-category retailer, uh, so it's important to to manage that uh, portfolio very well. Um, we will uh, look at uh, increasing the mix of our general merchandise, which is complementary to the food. Uh, we will be we will continue to be a food first uh, retailer, so food which is uh, everything from fresh uh, to packaged food to staples uh, will be our uh, driver. But we will also have a very complementary mix of general merchandise, which we all know helps us in terms of ma uh, managing the whole margin mix. Our two big USPs um, in our portfolio, or I would say differentiators are, uh, are fresh, which is fish and meat specifically. It, uh, it's something which uh, is, is, is also a frequency builder, uh, and we do uh, liquor retailing in East. Uh, we will continue to build on these uh, differentiators uh, to have a healthy portfolio and a mix. Uh, which uh, is not just from a margin point of view, which is internal, but also from a customer point of view, where we are offering products which are differentiated every day, uh, and then therefore drives uh, stickiness and uh, frequency. So those are three top, uh, I would say, you know, um, uh, top line drivers. Uh, uh, the other key part going forward is, uh, you know, this cost optimization, right sizing. This is not a one-off exercise. This is a continuous. Uh, exercise to make sure that we uh, operate in a very efficient and a lean manner. Uh, and uh, like we said, uh, we did uh, one phase one of the cost uh, optimization exercise uh, in uh, quarter two uh, of this year, which centered around uh, 20 plus stores, which we exited, uh, plus some uh, right sizing of the organization at the corporate level. Uh, we are continuing that in uh, in, in, in quarter four, uh, and really the plan is. Uh, from from last year's level, we 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 are we are looking at taking out close to 10 to 11 percent of our uh, operating costs uh, compared to last year, which is a significant one. But um, uh, we are confident that we can identify uh, the inefficiencies and, and and areas where we can remove that. Uh, so really, cost would also remain uh, a key focus, uh, and I think driving top line and improvement of costs uh, would have that uh, impact on on a bit as we've seen a little bit of it in quarter three as well. Uh, you know, the, the impact in quarter three of uh, improving sales, keeping your margins same, uh, led to a, a RGM increase of uh, 5%. Your costs came down, uh, and therefore you saw that, uh, you know, delta impact as far as the EBITDA is concerned. Uh, so top line and cost will be the focus, uh, and then looking at uh, different, um, you know, efficiencies, 
scaling up the share of our online and e-commerce business. So I think that's, that's where we will continue focusing. If I were to give you some uh, additional uh, color on, uh, on Nature's Basket, uh, Nature's Basket again, um, you know, start with uh, the fact that, uh, you know, we do have a very definite uh, and defined right to win in this. It's a, a unique premium positioning, um, you know, proposition in, in retail. Uh, you know, sustaining uh, good gross margins, 29.6% is what I kind of called out. Uh, and this is around a, centered around, uh, you know, an experiential shopping environment focusing on uh, food, uh, you know, fresh uh, as assortment, fresh including everything from cheese uh, to, uh, you know, vegetables, fruits, exotics, imported, uh, meat, uh, charcuterie, a good bakery section. So a very, very relevant premium proposition. Uh, and uh, the fact that it is uh, positioned like that, it also operates in a very focused geography. So we are present in uh, in four cities, uh, uh, and and again, you know, growing it in those four cities. So Nature's Basket would continue to be driven, uh, keeping true to this proposition of uh, being uh, a kind of a gourmet retailer. Uh, we have uh, in this quarter we've launched um, uh, India's first luxury uh, grocery retail format uh, called the Artisanal Pantry. Uh, the first store was launched in at the Palladium Mall in Bombay, uh, you know, with a very uh, high experiential zone, which has everything from uh, you know a, a large selection of cheese, a great bakery section, um, uh, you know, even a you know salt bar, uh, a big mushroom collection, uh, also having things like um, you know a cocoa and a chocolate uh, center. So really, I mean, uh, driving this experience is is, is what uh, Nature's Basket would be, uh, while keeping our Operating costs are uh, quite lean, and the fact that we are focused in focused geographies, four cities helps us to do that. Uh, so Nature's Basket would also be uh, a story which will be driven on staying true to the proposition, driving uh, top line, as well as keeping your cost in control. So that's, uh, that's really uh, you know, how we want to drive this. Uh, if I were to summarize, uh, I would say that, look, quarter three, uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, we've, we've laid out some part of this uh, strategy. And we see that uh, coming through with uh, uh, top line growth as well as a beta improvement. Uh, the task on hand is to make sure that this is not one off and we keep sustaining it, uh, you know, both into quarter four and going forward for next year. Uh, but uh, we are quite confident that, you know, this is a plan which will help us uh, to drive the organization towards uh, growth, uh, you know, and a beta improvement uh, as far as it's concerned. So I'll stop at that and uh, we'll open it up for questions uh, from the Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Bharat Gupta from India Retail. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, it's Bharat Gupta from India Inside Value Fund. Uh, thanks for taking up my question. So, sir, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first, in regard to the debt profile, so can you just share what is the current debt number? Because as such, uh, whatever numbers which we have reported, so thing which which points out to that, though we are not doing that meaningfully in operations, but we are stuck up and there is a lot of pile up of debt. I think in September numbers it was close to 650 odd crores. So, what's our plan? Like in terms of scaling up, also we will be requiring good amount of debt, uh, good amount of fundraise. So, uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, Bharat sir. Hello, Bharat yeah. sir. Uh, sir, you are yeah. not audible. Can you please uh, take your device closer to you? Uh, am I audible now? Uh, so a little bit uh, louder. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yes, it's clear. yeah. Okay. Uh, so my question pertains to the debt profile. Uh, so sir, can you share what 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 was the debt number with respect to December quarter, uh, the gross debt number? Yeah. So uh, at the if, if you look at the the debt position at a consolidated level, uh, debt is at seven hundred and eighty five, uh, which includes uh, hundred odd at, at uh, Nature's Basket and at Spencer. And uh, look, we are we are cognizant of this. Uh, you know, we are also looking at it debt in relation to the equity and uh, we believe that we have uh, uh, you know 
at the, at the right time, we will uh, look at uh, how we bring in more funds. Uh, but, but the group uh, remains committed uh, to the business. And I think our first task as a business is to improve the uh, you know, operation metrics, uh, which, like I, I mentioned, is on the right side. And then I think uh, the, the, the funds and, and managing that will, will be a natural outcome of the improvement which comes. And the group is committed to that. But sir, in terms of even if we want to scale up and create new experience stores, so we will be requiring good amount of capex, and also our working capital is also stuck. So, any timeline to which we are adhering right now, and with respect to any like spin-off or any like we want to sell off any particular segment, so we are we exploring any opportunity with regard to it? Yeah. So uh, you know, as it comes to uh, do we have sufficient uh, you know working capital as well as uh, making the investment in the stores. Absolutely, this is as part of the plan for the year. We will uh, have uh, working capital as well as, you know, we're not, uh, we, we, like I said, it's about a judicious expansion. We're talking about one lakh square feet. Uh, so, you know, we are well uh, capitalized, uh, funded for that. Uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, stake sales and looking at this thing, I mean, these are, uh, you know, these are uh, premature uh, kind of, you know, conjectures. And uh, we will, uh, you know, at, at the right time, uh, you know, uh, we will uh, we'll keep evaluating and doing it, but nothing concrete at the moment. Uh, so, uh, secondly, like in terms of, like we have not been able to do successfully with respect to markets in southern states. So, what kind of, a, like, uh, you can say lessons which we have learned from that and how we want to scale up further. I know we want to confine majorly towards Eastern UP, Bengal, but any particular plans which we have, uh, like with re with respect to scaling up within those segments also, and particularly, are you evaluating opportunities also further uh, in respect to other markets? Yeah, so I think the the point is that it's uh, you know our ability. Uh, it's not that we were not uh, successful. I think uh, what we said is given our size and given our um, you know kind of our operating structure. It makes sense uh, to operate in clusters with high penetration of stores. So, just to give you an example, in Chennai we had, you know, nine stores, small stores. Uh, most of them were small stores, uh, and therefore to drive uh, efficiencies, focus stuff, even to do a marketing campaign, uh, to this thing, it becomes very uh, suboptimal if you don't have scale in that particular thing. So, the reason was not that we were not able to drive uh, thing. I mean, I think that that comes with a little bit of concentration as well. In the east, we have uh, like I said, in Calcutta, we have 42 stores. So the ability to service these stores efficiently from a supply chain perspective, uh, to do a campaign which can be where you do a media campaign which is isolatable to that state, becomes far easier and more efficient. Uh, so I think that was the reason why we kind of took a call to focus on this. Uh, and secondly, we also believe that uh, you know within these clusters, there is still headroom for growth. Uh, so there is, uh, you know, there is no need to... Uh, you know, have a token presence in, in uh, six geographies uh, and then kind of uh, be inefficient in terms of servicing them. Uh, we believe that we can drive growth in existing four or five clusters, uh, deepen the penetration of store counts in these clusters, uh, and uh, service them more efficiently from a supply chain perspective as well as uh, from a you know, whole communication perspective. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, uh, the cost of servicing and the cost of communication uh, at a multi-state level at an all-India level this just, just escalate. So I think it was, uh, that was the decision and therefore uh, we will, um, uh, you know, first uh, deepen our penetration in these three clusters and obviously once, uh, you know, we get to a certain level, uh, uh, we will evaluate if there is, uh, you know, merit in, in, uh, in, in uh, expansion into uh, more, more strategic clusters. Uh, but right now I think we have uh, enough of opportunity and enough of an existing footprint uh, to expand in these three geographies, and that is what we will do. Uh, right, sir. Uh, sir, what will be a market share in those regions, particularly where we are operating in the branded retail space? Uh, you know, there is no, uh, there is no, uh, there is no Nielsen equivalent in retail, so it'll be very difficult for me to give you a number. Uh, but um, uh, you know, uh, but we are in the in the east. We are a strong leader. Uh, so I mean that's uh, that's that's clear, uh, and again the task is to ensure that we maintain this leadership, and which is why it goes back to what I was saying earlier is, uh, you know, it is about strengthening, deepening presence, and consolidating your leadership. Uh, 
so yeah i mean in areas where we operate in, in cities we have clear distinct leadership which is why uh, when i said you know right to win a right to win is in these three clusters and that is why where we want to focus yeah uh but sir, in terms like in terms of competitive intensity i think with respect to other there are different players all in together everyone is trying to capture and gain the market share across pan india basis so like how we want to position ourselves and distinct ourselves with respect to other peers and i believe so uh, then comes the question on funding as such because we are also con- combined with respect to the debt side so like even we if, when we want to scale up our operation side so we would be requiring like we want to cut till down on the cost part as well as reduce the debt side at the same time we also want to have a growth ambition so uh, like how we want to match the two things and particularly grow out yeah i think we've already answered that question so again just summarize say that look we have uh, we are adequately uh, uh, you know funded to uh for the business both from a working capital as well as the store expansion for next year uh, and uh, with respect to co- competitive intensity yes this is a competitive thing but uh, also let's remember the context that modern trade in india today has 6 to 7% of the overall grocery so it's about uh, you know not just a, a market share gain but it's also about uh, you know gaining in overall the modern trade pie Uh, as well as in e-commerce so i think there are enough growth opportunities and we are well uh, capitalized for the year to kind of you know execute our plans uh, both from a working capital and a store expansion point right uh, so also with respect to niches basket i think it's been more than 2 years now since we have bought it out from godri so sorry i i, I could not get you clearly uh, could you be a bit louder uh, yeah sure uh, i was just asking with respect to niches basket so it's been more than 2 years now uh, since we started out with the operation so particularly in your assessment how long will it take to stabilize now because on the ebitda front though we might we have been profitable with respect to this quarter but eventually if we want and be on the profitable side so how do you see the assessment from your side like how much time will it take to stabilize on the operation side and what kind of addition in with respect to stores are we looking at yeah so uh, i think uh, just to factually is saying we we uh, acquired this in 2019 uh, and uh, by all measures uh, uh, the operations has been quite stable uh, you know in fact we are uh, you know adding stores like i mentioned we've added a new uh, you know gourmet uh, part of it called the artisan factory uh, pantry uh, so yeah we are growing and i think if you look at again i i mentioned if you look at nature's basket um, you know uh, financial performance you know almost 30% gross margin uh, so that's evidence of a more than stable operation uh, you know we've got 10% growth uh, year on year 13% quarter on quarter uh, so i think both of them do support the fact that uh, you know it is um, uh, uh, the positioning is well defined uh, you know we're delivering on that and it is uh, translating into financials uh, on your question on profitability well you know i mean if you look at the numbers a uh, 6 crore ebitda in the quarter and if you look at the Uh, you know if you take out the non cash part of it i mean it's a 1 crore uh, loss right uh, so i think this is something which is which is, which is easily fixable with growth uh, and and i think that's not i think the the primary driver here is to to build the scale over here and like i said we will be adding stores in the focus geographies uh, that will help us with the margin profile it has uh, it will help us i mean a 7% ebitda uh, on, on that quarter uh, you know that is uh, something which will set us up well on scale to deliver a pbc Uh, so the margins of near about 29% on the gross side so that will be on a sustainable basis in the segment absolutely absolutely it's it's almost 30 29.6 right right, yeah. right. Uh, but sir, uh, in terms of the footfall so um, across across the stores like whether it is niche baskets or even in spinces so the footfalls are just equivalent to the pre covid numbers or we are uh, still for Uh, can you join the queue for the follow up question sure 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 Th- thanks okay. i will join the queue okay. thank you thank you and the next question is from the line of kunal from fair value capital please go ahead sir hello can you hear me yes we can hear you kunal okay so my first question was about princess retail uh 
how are the D2C brand tie-ups progressing in there? And what was the quarterly run rate for the latest quarter? And can you also provide any guidance? So your, your question was on... The D2C, D2C brand, brand tie-ups. Yeah, so look, we don't, uh, we don't single out and say uh, uh, our driver for operational thing is not that I should have X percent growth of D2C. I think the way we look at it is uh, uh, D2C brands uh, are, they should be fairly represented in our assortment because they are uh, a, a signal of the fact that, uh, that you know, these kind of offerings are gaining traction with consumers. And if we want our overall proposition and format to be relevant to consumers, we need to make sure that we have the right assortment. Uh, just because it's not a fad that, you know, if it is D2, D2C brands in a certain category, if there are 100 brands launched, uh, we don't put a KPI saying I should have 50 out of those 100 brands. We will put the brands which are relevant uh, uh, with our consumers uh, because ultimately our goal is not to build D2C brands. Uh, that is the job of the D2C brands. Our job is to build an assortment which is relevant to the consumers uh, and the evolving consumer preferences. Uh, and if, uh, as and when D2C brands, uh, you know, evolve, uh, they are an integral part of our uh, assortment. So today we have, uh, you know, D2C brands like, you know, Mama Earth is uh, well represented. Uh, we have uh, brands in, in, in coffee, uh, uh, in, in health and beauty. Uh, you know, you look at brands like Sugar, you look at brands like Plum. Uh, we do have it, but we 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 will not get swayed and have an over-representation. Every brand, uh, you know, uh, and in fact, as part of efficiency, we need to keep a tight assortment, an assortment which is um, uh, reflective of what the consumer preference is, but also has a certain velocity. Uh, and that's the way we will control it. Otherwise, just listing uh, D2C brands or any other new brand, uh, you know, is uh, comes back to bite you uh, from an efficiency point of view. So we are balancing that with... Uh, as a, a particular brand in a particular category uh, evolves, uh, you know, takes market share, we do give it representation. But we have been a launch pad for quite a few D2C brands. Uh, so I hope I've answered your question. We don't have a separate metric and we don't track the metrics as saying that in a particular category, X percent share should be given to D2C brands. It's a function of how yes, the D2C sir. brand does in the market. Yeah. Yes, yes that, that was very helpful. Thank you. Um, my qu my next next question was about the private labels. How how is the growth traction you're seeing in there? And can you also provide some uh, data about the margins? And what is your thought thought process behind scaling this segment? Yeah, yeah. I think a very good question. So look, I mean, a private label is always um, you know a retailer's uh, I would say uh, secret uh, weapon to to improve the mix. Um, and, and for us, uh, we have a, a good mix uh, as far as the private mix, uh, private label business is concerned. Of course, it varies across category. Uh, you know, I would say in staples, we have a very good, uh, you know, uh, private uh, brand uh, listing. And it comes uh, at a margin which is normally accretive to the category margin. Um, you know, our focus has been, uh, to be honest, I mean, our focus has been on staples. Uh, and we are looking, we, we have a presence in some of the other FMCG categories as well. But if I were to give you a blended uh, mix, uh, it's it's in the range of uh, you know 11 to 12 percent, which is which I would say is quite healthy. Right. And li like I said, it comes at margins which are accretive to the category margin. Understood, sir. That was also helpful. And uh, the next question is about the nature's basket. Uh, How is the competitive intensity shaping up with the from the quick commerce players? Yeah, so uh, I think, uh, you know, Nature's Basket, like I said, has a very unique uh, positioning. Uh, in fact, uh, I don't want to sound arrogant, but uh, we are probably the only uh, gourmet premium uh, grocery retailer in the country now. Uh, so it operates in a very different space. Uh, you know, in the grocery sector, I mean, when it comes to Spencer's, we do compete with certain others, but I think uh, Nature's Basket uh, has no direct competition so far, given the positioning uh, and, and where we are. Uh, and then your second part of the question, how does it, how does e-commerce or quick commerce? I think, look, uh, given the nature and the positioning of uh, Nature's Basket, uh, it's a very high experiential-led format. So it is not that, uh, you know, people who want to go and experience and buy a different cheese, they will order on Big Basket or Quick Commerce. I mean, this is a very store experience-led format, uh, and, and we believe that's what the strength is. Now, having said that, um, 
you know, uh, uh, there will be plans to strengthen and build the online part of nature's basket as well. Uh, but in a typical consumer uh, psyche, I would expect that uh, the customer adoption uh, and I would say loyalty will stem from visiting and experiencing the nature's basket store. And uh, the online part of it will be of your convenience of follow-up purchases. Uh, so that's how that segment will operate. Uh, so I, I would not go as far as saying it is insulated from uh, the intensity of quick commerce, but uh, you know, Nature's Basket, given its uh, positioning and uh, assortment and the price points which it carries, uh, uh, so far does not uh, have competition and um, in, in that space direct competition and is less impacted by quick commerce. All right. So it will be right to say that you're also catering to a different customer set than what the general quick commerce uh, absolutely issue. yeah i think it's 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 a different consumer need state which you which you cater to i don't think we should say it's a different consumer because the same consumer has different need states uh, you know you might want to buy uh, you know premium gourmet stuff uh, two three times a month when you have a special occasion you're making something and on a top up you're buying your uh, you know atta dal chawal either on quick commerce or on visiting a grocery store so yeah, it's different need states which you kind of cater to, uh, and, and uh, Nature's Basket is clearly positioned towards the premium gourmet grocery uh, retail needs uh, of a consumer in the large metros, uh, so large concentration in, in in Bombay. Yeah, and other cities. Right, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for your detailed answers. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Yash Bajaj from Lucky Investment Managers. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, good morning and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes you, are. you are. Okay, uh, so uh, my question was around Nature's Basket. So just wanted to get a sense Sorry, of the uh, time I didn't get Sorry, I, I, I didn't, we didn't, I lost you. Your, your question was around what? Uh, nature's Basket. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to understand the kind of parameters we look at before opening a nature's basket store when it comes to it comes in terms of uh, locality, uh, the customer profile, or any other retailing stores which are around. Well, I think um, you know it's besides the standard parameters which you look at in um, in grocery retail. Obviously, the one which is most important is um, I would say. The affluence of the of the catchment area, uh, and 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 obviously uh, then looking at uh, you know the affluence and therefore the affluence determines the propensity to spend uh, on 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 categories which we keep. Uh, so clearly, I mean uh, the single biggest uh, I would say you know criteria would be the affluence. Uh, of course, we also look at uh, density of population and where it is, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean uh, you know those are the ones besides the standard. You know, location, accessibility, etc. But uh, uh, the, the differentiating factor is looking at uh, the catchment area, demographics, more from an affluence and income point of view. Yeah. And uh, so, just a follow up to this is that uh, we uh, currently we, when it comes to gourmet or retailing, we compete with the standalone one or two mom and pop stores. That's how it is. Sorry. Uh, the, you're saying that the competition for nature's basket from standalone. Yes, look, I think I mean you know I mean don't take me literally when I said it has no competition. Uh, you know in India there's competition for everything. Uh, what I'm saying is that there is organized on scale. Uh, you know there is no one retailer today who's a, who's who has a, a premium gourmet luxury retail kind of an offering. Yes, you do have in localities you have your. Uh, you know, established, uh, you know, Kirana stores who, who stock uh, either a wide variety of imported goods or you will find, uh, you know, they will have uh, a one good selection of exotic fruit. So you will have that. But I think on an organized, branded level, uh, we do have, uh, I would say, the uniqueness and differentiation of being the one uh, which is uh, there. Uh, but yeah, in pockets, I mean, if you look at Bombay, South Bombay, I'm sure in every, you know, locality like uh, Napier Sea Road, Worley, you know, wherever you look, Kolaba, you will have those, uh, you know, Kirana stores which will have a good assortment of imported, somebody will have a good assortment of exotic fruits which they get. Uh, 
but yeah, not on a standardized, organized uh, way uh, as a branded chain. Uh, we are right now the only one. Yeah. Got it. Got it. And uh, just my last question also. Uh, so, uh, I mean, Nature's Basket caters to the uh, luxury segment of uh, groceries. So, if I look at the other categories when it comes to consumption, look at uh, premium cars or uh, watches or apparel, they are the kind of growth rates we are seeing there is relatively higher versus uh, the nature's basket growth rate. So how should uh, we look at this? How should we reconcile this? Well, look, I think, uh, you know, comparing uh, luxury cars or let's say any other thing with, uh, with, with premium grocery might not, you might not get a like to like index. You would buy a luxury car once in three years. Uh, but if you go and buy grocery, you buy grocery, you know, probably three to four times uh, a month. Uh, so I think, yeah, I mean, it's not comparable, but uh, one has to look at it more from a point of view of is there a sizable market and is there uh, a growing category of people who are willing to either uh, try, uh, you know, premium price products, uh, you know, pay for it. I think that's how you will have to look at it. So it's not a like for like the luxury cars grew one year by 20% and nature's basket grew by 10%. Uh, I, I don't know whether we can draw a conclusion that it is underperforming uh, for the position. I think the fact is, uh, the, both uh, are growth in both are an indicator that uh, the Indian consumer has, uh, you know, greater uh, not just uh, you know liquidity and um, and consumption power, but is also going out and putting their money where their mouth is in terms of spending. So I think that's the way I would look at it. I would not draw uh, comparisons between different luxury categories, uh, you know, that's that's the way I would look at it. But yeah, I mean, both should move in the same direction. Yeah, so okay. double digit growth in, in nature's basket is, is something which is, uh, you know, corroborates the point that uh, overall in the in that premium luxury space, there is growth. Okay, got it. That's all from my side. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Nisarg Vakharia from NV Alpha Fund Management LLP. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, you have entailed in your presentation that the benefits of the restructuring and cost-cutting exercise will be visible from quarter one. Uh, my question is that you obviously have an MIS report of understanding which stores are unprofitable, like you have shut down the South India stores. Will you stop burning cash by quarter one FI uh, from next year of quarter one with the restructuring exercise that you have done? Because I think you have burned 40, 45 crores of cash even in this quarter. Yes, so, I mean, look, that's the ultimate goal. Uh, I, I can't give, uh, you know, a forward-looking absolute guidance, uh, but uh, both the, the right-sizing and focusing on the stores is... Uh, is, is with the effort of making sure that all stores and as a network our stores are all storable depositors. Yeah. No, sir, which year you will stop burning cash? Because last three years, I think 600 crores of debt has been piled on because of cash burn. So as investors, it's very important and pertinent for us to understand that when will you stop burning cash indicatively. Yes, so I think that is exactly what we are doing in terms of exiting certain things. If you want a, a you know, specific thing, I mean, the, the, obviously the time frame which the management has taken is the 18 to 24 month thing where we will... Uh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, second, sir, uh, the, you know, the most successful retailer, DMART, uh, makes 8% margin uh, uh, because they don't, uh, because they own most of the properties. Now, we are essentially in high-end malls uh, where the rental costs are much higher as compared to uh, likes of a DMART. So, in your opinion, what should be the steady state EBITDA margin in our business uh, in retail whenever the business turns around? What is your yeah, endeavor or what is your goal? I think we'll, we'll, we'll take it one step at a time. I think the first endeavor is to break even uh, and okay. then to look at what it is. Uh, so, I think, you know, yeah, I mean, Anywhere from a, a you know once you break even uh, and and I've you know uh, I've kind of given you a kind of a time frame which we are looking at doing that. Uh, 
I think uh, you know anywhere from six to eight percent is, is is where we should be targeting. But right now, I think that's looking too much ahead. For for us, the immediate priority is to break even. Okay. Thank you so much, and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Akhil Parikh from Bartliwala and Karani Securities India Private Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is, uh, uh, how do we balance the game between, say, wider keeping wider assortment versus being efficient in terms of uh, uh, inventory management? Uh, if I look at, say, a global player like Costco or in India, if you look at Dmart, right, uh, they don't leave enough choices for the customer in terms of the assortment, and that's why the sales throughput of the asset terms are very high. While I understand our value proposition is different uh, as compared to, say, DMART or other value retailers. So how do we find balance between these two things, basically, you know, where we keep uh, fewer assortments, I mean, relatively okay assortments, and at the same time uh, be efficient in terms of inventory management? Yeah. I think it's a very good question, and I think that is uh, one of the uh, secret sources, uh, if I would say, to to manage uh, uh, retail thing. Uh, the way it is done is it, it's a bit of a science and a bit of an art. Uh, I think, you know, uh, uh, the art part of it is you look at what your proposition and positioning is, and therefore you need to give a minimal credible assortment. So if, you are, uh, if, if your proposition is on value, uh, then you have to have an uh, assortment which is giving weak value, and therefore you know, not con you're not really, uh, you know, from, an, from a consumer point of view, you're not really projecting a a width of assortment, you're giving value in whatever you're giving in the assortment. If our proposition is about, uh, you know, you're giving multiple options or a range, uh, then I think you optically, you are, and you know, you have to give a certain level, your minimal credible assortment would be slightly wider. That's the thing. The science part of it is that, look, even if you're giving uh, a certain assortment uh, based on your positioning, you have to constantly do what is called range effectiveness. So you have to, you know, the merchant's job is to Figure out uh, uh, that you know what part of the range is uh, is faster moving and the where the velocity is higher, and then kind of constantly keep trimming the tail. There is always a tail in the assortment. Uh, even uh, the most efficient retailer in the world will have a tail. Uh, I think the trick is how quickly you respond and you prune the tail and you work on um, over a period of time on an assortment which is quick moving. So yeah, I mean that is that's the that's the key part of it. Uh, and uh, given our our um, positioning of uh, of a wide assortment, it makes that even more challenging, and 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 that is where you know efficiencies have to be there. If if we do that well, that translates into lower uh, days on hand, and therefore higher inventory turns. And that's the the operating metrics which I'll be honest, we have not been very sharp at in the last uh, few years, and that is what we will uh, drive uh, going forward in terms of looking at how are we forecasting, how are we building the assortment, and more importantly, how we are reacting every uh, 30 days to do a range effectiveness and, and take corrective action. So it's a very good point. I mean, that is that is one of the single biggest, I would say, levers of operational efficiency in terms of what you're buying, what is selling, and therefore what you're buying next, and how are you kind of, you know, making sure that you're tight. Sure. So, so uh, I'm already taking some, some of the steps. Do we have a technology stack in place which should be able to uh, kind of help us? in fighting the uh, inventory yeah so look uh, you know this is like i said this is uh, you know we are we are working right now on um, on what is a predictive uh, model so you you kind of feed in what your sales has been and therefore what your buy plan for next month has to have that uh, at some point of time yes you're right with the kind of uh, you know machine learning and you know analytics tools which are there we can build that but to be honest right now we don't have a uh, you're not running any AI or, uh, you know, uh, uh, machine program which kind of tells you exactly what you should be buying. Uh, what we do is we do an analysis of what we have sold, uh, and then we look into the buy, and then we keep doing that. So we call it the SNOP plan, uh, and, and we uh, kind of, you know, measure what the sell-through was from the previous months and the previous months, and we look at trends, and then we therefore factor the buy plan for the next month. So right now, uh, it does not have all of that high-tech uh, AI machine learning built into it, but definitely that's an area 
uh, which we will uh, keep looking into and how do we sharpen our uh, analytics around supply chain planning. Sure, sure. Thanks. This is helpful. Second on the uh, uh, sales per square foot, right? I mean, uh, given that our store addition will be relatively uh, on a restrict, restrictive side or a limited uh, this thing. Uh, so obviously, I am assuming that our uh, endeavor would be to increase the sales throughput. Uh, if I look at our sales per square foot, it's roughly at around 17 to 18,000 square feet. And uh, pardon me for comparing with Pmart, uh, which may not necessarily be a right comparison, but they are almost at two uh, x of what we do. So any uh, specific measures we are taking in terms of improving the sales per square foot, uh, uh, mainly on the Spencer side? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, on Spencer, definitely, if you look at our SPSF uh, sales per square foot, it's not, forget about comparison with DMART, it is not what it also used to be two, three years ago. And I think the, the endeavor to, or the decision to exit some of these stores or regions was because they were like far lower and they were the drag on the SPSF as well. Uh, you know, today, uh, while we don't call out uh, numbers on SPSF, but I'll take the liberty of, of maybe saying, look, we are in excess of, uh, you know, 1,250 uh, SPSF per month. Uh, and again, um, you know, the, the, the clear, you know, driver, operational driver is, what I say, how do we drive more from the same? So therefore, how do we take that number closer to 1,500, 1,550 per square foot per month, which is what uh, we used to do in the past. So, I mean, I mean that, that I think should tell you that we are looking at that as a serious operating measure uh, and uh, and we, are, we will drive that. We have uh, uh, seen uh, that in quarter three, we have been able to deliver close to that uh, and, and lift that up. And we'll keep sustaining that and, and taking that. It's, we don't be bound by that 1500 level, but we need to consistently deliver that. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, it goes back to that. It's not about, you know, adding on stores uh, and increasing your trading area. It is also driving the ability to get higher uh, productivity and higher SPSF from the same stores. And that's what we are focusing on. And we will improve that metric. Sure, sure. Just to clarify, the decline in sales per square foot which we had from past was largely because of the increase in denominator, that is the square foot increase, basically, right? Not because of the uh, change in the product. Is that correct? Uh, not really. I mean, it was it was also the top line was uh, you know had not grown, so it was it was a combination of that. So thanks a lot, uh, um, and uh, wishing you best luck for coming with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Rakshit Sethi from Fair Value Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, to start off with, I want to thank you guys for having this analyst call. This is a pleasant change, and I hope uh, this will be a regular feature and we'll get to interact with you all uh, on a quarterly basis going forward. Um, having said that, uh, to follow up on the last uh, uh, analyst's comments, you know, you were very right in pointing out that um, the assortments in the store depends on what the value proposition is. And so my first question would be with regards to Spencer Retail. You know, we've been watching the company for the last five, six years. What is our, where do we want to position uh, Spencer Retail? And I ask this because there have been a number of uh, experiments. So in terms of the size of the format, uh, we've lately seen a couple of Spencer Kiranas uh, having popped up as well. Uh, there used to be a, a nature's basket that was converted into a Spencer's Kirana. So going forward, um, when we are looking at adding, say, a million square feet a year, where uh, in terms of format and in terms of positioning value proposition, where are we focusing on and what is the, the thought process that the management has behind that? Yeah. Uh, thank you for that question. And I think, um, you know, just to think your question is very specific to what is the positioning value proposition for Spencer. Uh, so which tells me that there's no ambiguity on where the positioning and value proposition of Nature's Basket is, which is well. I'll come well, to Nature's Basket subsequently because uh, anyway, we'll come to that yeah, later. Yeah. But yeah, first. To first Look, I think on Spencer's, it, Spencer's has uh, is uh, you know what we are clear is uh, 
we should also be clear on what we are not and then we are clear on what we are i think what we are not we are not uh, uh, going to be a value uh, discount retailer um, uh, for a variety of reasons and i am not dwell on that but uh, you know in the past we uh, you know i'd be honest i mean you know you succumb to competitive uh, you know not competitive but you succumb, succumb to where the whole sector is going in terms of uh, you know trying to uh, follow that uh, and not playing off your strengths so our strengths will not be able to uh, will not be that we will be able to uh, drive a certain level of scale with uh, you know deep uh, discount or value uh, where our inherent uh, business model dna and uh, our strength is to be uh, uh, to offer uh, the right assortment when i say right it is uh, it, it's an assortment which has choices relevant as well as width uh give a great shopping experience in store uh so you know that's that's something which uh, you know you you speak to consumers yes they get value in a certain store uh but the whole uh, shopping experience is very different in our stores uh and and you know there are uh, you know like i said different consumers and the same consumer sometimes sometimes they're looking at value sometimes they're looking at the whole shopping experience uh, so our proposition is very clearly on giving um uh, a wider assortment uh, more choices actually uh, i would not say wider assortment more choices uh, in in categories uh, so it's not just you know staples uh, like i said a differentiator in our assortment uh, in the east are things like liquor fish and meat uh, so you give the complete uh, household uh, grocery assortment uh, and more choices within that uh, it's the experience uh, you have the right complementary non food mix um so again some correction there uh, what we need to do and and that's the uh, the positioning for spencers uh, in in the relevant areas um so then how would you explain entry into say spencers kirana and how would that translate into store sizes what typically going forward would be uh, the store size formats that you'd be adding more yeah. so yes yeah, sir so, yeah. your your second part of your question is look how is this what is the spencers kirana spencers high market so today in in our format we have uh, let's say two broad levels we have the smaller stores which uh, which which are uh, you know anywhere from 2000 to 6000 square feet and then you have the hypers which are uh, anywhere from 10000 going up to you know as big as 20000 uh, and uh, you know our experience and the performance is shown Uh, depending on regions that we need to have a good mix of both so we are not veering towards one and saying we don't only have hypers we'll have a thing the shopping uh, mission is very different in a kirana and in a hyper a hyper size the fact that it's l- located in maybe high street mall not not high street but a mall is more of a destination uh, shopping uh, experience whereas a kirana becomes more of a regular convenient top up kind of a grocery model so like i said depending on the city we are in we would like to have a good mix of a few large hyper formats which give the complete experience of what spencers is the complete assortment the width of assortment the shopping is thing and then that's complemented by in the same city you have uh, you know comp- you have a, a network of small stores Uh, which are meant for your convenient top up shopping trips uh, over there so just to give take an example and again i would not just say calcutta even if you take a city like shiliguri right which is in uh, north bengal we have six stores five stores and we have two large stores which give the complete thing and then we have stores which are 5000 square feet and we have a store which is 3000 square feet so i think it's a mix of both of them going forward uh, yes i mean we also have to see Uh, the cost involved the the rising you know rental cost high street location uh, we would uh, if you are if you are deepening our presence in a city we would look at uh, sizes which are more uh, you know i would say the sweet spot would be 8000 square feet but if you are entering a new city which actually we are not going to do in the next 12 months uh, if you want to enter a new city to establish the whole spencers uh, experience and proposition you would need to have a combination of a large store as well uh, so yeah i mean the strategy for me is it's not an or it's an and we need to have both but we need to be very clear of uh, uh, you know going forward in depending on the city are we going to add more large stores are we going to do more a10 i think uh, 
in existing cities where we already have a footprint, we will see a lot more of the eight to 10,000 square feet kind of stores, which can give the complete very, very, food That's very reassuring to hear because uh, as someone who's based out of New Delhi, you know, when, say in East, the brand is established, it stands for experiential retail. If you're already established as a brand and then you launch a smaller plate size store, then it transcends, right? The, the yeah. eventual customer appreciates what's happening. When you enter Delhi uh, and you start up uh, with a, a Spencer's Kirana, Delhi I can't experience to what a Spencer hypermarket exactly. is like. So it dilutes exactly. the whole brand of Spencer's for an entire market like Delhi. And that was a big concern, but I'm, I'm glad that that clarity is there. Um, that, uh, you know, that can have a negative impact when you enter a new city and you don't enter with the actual thing that you stand for. Yeah. yeah. So you're right. I mean, it's, you have to establish uh, the brand experience through, uh, you know, through, through a representative format. And as, when, you would, when you want to penetrate deeper in that city, then you have to have the small stores. You can't launch in a new city, that's what I said, with a small format, which does not, um, you know, give the, establish the whole experience. So, yeah, that's yeah, what we've learned. I'm very and surprised to see that Spencer's uh, Kirana. Uh, now, coming to Nature's um, 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 Basket, again, uh, you know, we had been giving this feedback to the earlier CEO. It's good to see that it appears that you are now also trying to look at the space that has completely been vacated by a food hall. Uh, earlier, if I would, you know, uh, give or take, uh, our store formats were similar to, say, a modern bazaar or a Limache. Uh, so my question would be that going forward, a how many, uh, uh, what is the addition store additions that you are going to be looking at, and in terms of again plate size, are we going to be looking at more food hall like large format with the artisan pantry or smaller plates? Yeah. So uh, look, uh, like we said, uh, Nature's Basket would be looking at. Um, uh, somewhere between 40 to 50,000 uh, square feet additional coming in next year. It will be focused in the cities where we are what I call the mega metros. So Bombay, where we have a good density. Uh, you know, looking at, um, we've, we've just opened in this quarter, we've opened one more store in Calcutta. Uh, so it'll be Bombay, Bangalore, which will be the focus. Uh, from a plate size or from a, you know, what is the format? Uh, you know, we've, like I said, we've launched Artisanal Pantry in Bombay. We've launched one more. So it will be, uh, it will, it will be a combination of the Artisanal Pantry, which are, which I would say become, would become a flagship in a city, plus, uh, you know, the regular nature's one. Uh, so it will be uh, a combination of both, but we are not looking at new cities, uh, no further expansion to new cities at the moment. Uh, we believe there is enough headroom in these existing cities uh, to put, Plonk a few more stores. And especially given the fact that food hall is completely packed up, I mean, that's a clear runway, right? That there is no one who's there taking that space at all completely right now. Um, so, uh, again, I know it's, uh, someone asked this earlier. Uh, I'm going to take a chance and ask again for both formats, first for Nature's Basket. Um, by when do we see uh, PBT, like throwing out cash? And uh, Spencer, uh, you said 18 to 24 months. Um, are we going to stick to that for cash burn uh, ending? So look again, uh, uh, you know, don't want to give a specific uh, timeline, but look, I said this that is the clear task on hand for the management. Uh, and um, you know, we've already started the journey. In some small measures, one quarter is showing a path. Uh, the path to profitability will be. Uh, shorter and quicker for Nature's Basket, uh, and then uh, not too distant for Spencer. So yeah, I mean, operating in the same time frame uh, of you know 18 to 24 months uh, at a consolidated level, uh, we should be uh, you know kind of on track to do that. Of course, it's not going to be easy, but that's what we've all signed up for, and that's what we are uh, you know charging up the teams and committing to to deliver. No? But yeah, I mean, Nature's Basket would be sooner than what Spencer's Great, and I hope, uh, like I started the uh, call with, uh, we'll have these interactions more regularly going forward. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, it is my first 
fun, but I can reassure you this will not be the last, and we will do it at a more periodic basis yeah, and a more regular basis. Thank you, yeah. Thank you very much. That will be all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Tushar Sarda from Athena Investments. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, there have been a lot of questions on, uh, you know, reaching profitability. I wanted to know what is rent as percentage of your sales in Spencer's and in Nature's basket separately? Uh, Look, uh, I think we don't call out that number, but I mean you can you can gauge it from the operating expense. But uh, rent as a thing is more ballpark in the region of five to six percent. So uh, to reach profitability, your gross margin in Spencer will have to increase from fifteen percent, which you're reporting now. Uh, what do you think it will need to go to? But actually, uh, I would like to correct Spencer's margins are. 19 percent uh, so i mean it's not 15 percent uh, so yeah no, I, mean, so I deducted you, from the reported numbers i deducted nature's basket and then i arrived at 15 percent from the console numbers so nature's basket seems to be 29 and uh, spencer seems to be 15 is that not right uh no so i think uh, for the december quarter uh, uh, spencer's at 18.9 percent to be precise uh, which is uh, uh, you know, a slight improvement from December of last year, which was at 18.8%. So we will strive to keep that as the, the level, and Nature's Basket is at 29.6%. Uh, okay. So that's 18.9 uh, is gross, right? Yes. Uh, yes no, it's, right. it's for the console, right? Not not for the Spencer standard. No, that's for Spencer's. Uh, so I, you were saying 15% for Spencer's, and I said... No, it's 18.9% okay. okay. my, my yeah. for nature's basket. And at a consolidated level, uh, you know, the margins are 20.3%. Okay, okay. And my second question was on, uh, you know, how scalable is nature's basket uh, business? Uh, if you take a, say, longer term view, say, five-year kind of a view, uh, what, what do you see the opportunity as? Yeah, so look, uh, there is, like I said, uh, you know, the exact numbers, we're we are in the, you know, cycle of a three-year AOP, which we'll put together. But uh, like, you know, somebody else had asked the question and, and, you know, they were saying that the growth in luxury segment is much higher. There is headroom for growth. Uh, you know, uh, the previous uh, person asked the question of saying that, you know, now with food hall, is saying you have a clear runway. I think these are all kind of indicators that there is headroom to growth. Uh, you know, we've got the operating model on nature's basket, uh, you know, with, with the margins, and we therefore will be committed to scaling it up. And uh, uh, there is enough opportunity to scale it up. Uh, so I so think you, that's, you that's have 33 doing. stores now. Uh, in five years, what can this, I mean, in terms of opportunity in the market, what is the size that is possible? I, I mean, I, I just want a rough idea of the market, right? Like, you know, when you talk to a pizza guy, he'll say 2,000 stores, 3,000 stores. So here, what do you think? You can go to 100 stores, 200 stores uh, yeah, in look, five, look, five I, six I, years' time. No, I think, look, if, if yeah, again, you know, it's it's uh, it's a forward-looking one. I would say, uh, you know, if you look at uh, the trajectory of, of growth as far as the economy is concerned, you know, premiumization, which is happening, uh, to say that, uh, you know, in five years from now, is can the market take... Uh, 150 of these format stores, absolutely. Uh, so I would, I would more answer from a category size. Yeah, yeah the market yeah, in five years could be 150 one. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm asking for category size, and you're the only yeah. player. So you know, yeah. obviously you yeah. dominate the category. So from that point of, uh, I'm saying from a category point of view, this is this is a category where you know it is, uh, you know, it is only going to get bigger as income expands in 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 urban uh, cities in, in large metros. And it's not just large metros. In five years from now, I mean, you could see the same thing in, you know, uh, in, in, in other large cities as well, whether it be a Pune or it be an Ahmedabad. Uh, so, yeah, there is, I think the whole category will grow. It's a function of how we uh, tap into that and how we uh, scale up. But uh, in five years from now in India for a, for a format, uh, which is premium gourmet uh, retailer to have 200 stores, absolutely, you know, kind of, 
it is doesn't sound like a wild number okay and uh, currently uh, what do you think is the size possible in a city like bombay or a delhi for this format i'm i'm again asking for category not necessarily for you but uh, how many stores uh, as of now bombay or a delhi can take of this format yeah look again uh, you know like i said bombay we have close to we have 22 stores right now um, you know city like bombay for a format like this uh, could uh, could easily probably you know take uh, i would say 30 35 stores uh, besides bombay we also have cities like bangalore which is you know again a very big concentration uh, of uh, consumers who will resonate with this proposition very well spread out we have eight stores there as a category, I mean, Bangalore could also take, uh, I would say, 15, 16 stores. So, yeah, there is, again, it all keeps going back to the fact that I'd say that, look, there is uh, there is headroom and there is, this category will only grow. Uh, and, and that is going to be influenced by not just rising incomes, but uh, more affluent lifestyle, people, uh, the propensity for people to uh, consume, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, to, to kind of, you know, experiment with uh, a lot of, uh, you know, international cuisines. So I think, yeah, there, there is headroom for growth over here. Each of these cities can take stores. So, which means you are underpenetrated currently, right? I mean, if you are saying Bombay itself has so much potential, uh, uh, so if you consider cities like Delhi and Calcutta and, you know, Chennai, uh, Hyderabad, uh, the potential is a lot more even currently. Well, I mean, if you're saying that we have 22 stores in Mumbai, so again, I, mean, I, no, I don't know where, you know, where you're trying to pay me, but uh, it's 22 stores. You said, what is the outlook? I said, you know, Bombay could take 30. Now, 22 out of 30 is not really underprinted. I think the point is, are there more cities like Bombay? No, underprinted in the sense you are not there in Delhi, for example, or Hyderabad or Chennai. Yeah. So, from, yeah. from that point of view, uh, what, what I wanted no, to say is, yeah. uh, can you grow much faster in nature's basket? I think it's, uh, again, no, it's, can you, can we grow, uh, I mean, you started with what is the size of the category in five years, and I said, I could, we can look at, you know, as a category, we can look at 200. Uh, you know, in terms of cities, uh, one specific city, which I said, you know, you, you talked about is, is Bombay. Uh, so I gave you a number. Uh, you know, similarly, Bangalore, yes, has a potential. Delhi, of course, has a potential. Uh, you know, but it's a question of how much we want to resource and build. I think we, we are saying that we want to uh, first, do it in Bombay and Bangalore, and then of course, yes, we will then expand it to other cities as well. We'll evaluate it. So okay. at the uh, moment, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Bartliwala and Karani Securities India Private Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you so much for. Uh, Thank you very much for all the uh, questions and the participants and uh, hope to connect with you on an ongoing basis.